हॅलो वेलकम ऑल टू दिस सेशन ऑफ क्राफ्ट डेरी मी डॉक्टर श्रीदेवी असं असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर आय ए आर ए हैदराबाद टुडे इन दिस सेशन ऑफ ग्राफ्ट डेरी वी आर गोइंग टू सी व्हॉट इज डायरेक्टेड ग्राफ्ट वी हॅव ऑलरेडी सीन व्हॉट इज अ ग्राफ्ट अ ग्राफ्ट जी इज नथिंग जे कन्सिस्ट ऑफ जी विथ टू सेट्स पॅटेक सेट अँड एड सेट पॅटेक सेट कन्सिस्ट ऑफ सेट ऑफ पॉइंट अँड एड सेट सेट ऑफ सेट ऑफ and this edge set consists of the set of pairs of elements of phi there we are not concerned about the direction of graph direction of any edge now we are seeing we are going to see what is a directed graph is actually where, first we will see where and when and where these directed graphs are being used in many physical situations like street map street map of a city with on way streets and also the flow of networks with valves in the pipes and electrical networks etc where it is the positions where we are using it is mostly the places where we are using directed graphs directed graphs are, are also used in the abstract representation of computer programs where the vertices represent the program instructions and the edges specify execution sequence that is if you are given a instruction and how this uh, these instructions are to be performed these where the edges are to specify the execution sequence the directed graphs are also considered to be invaluable in the study of sequential mach- machines and used for system analysis and the control theory the flow of signal flow graphs now we will see the formal definition of directed graph as well, we have seen in graph g we are we are just drawing with vertices and the edges are drawn like this how are like how are we like and now what is the difference between it is undirect this is an undirected graph and how we will see we are going to define this directed graph direct usually the graph it was defined as denoted by g and directed graph is denoted by st the directed graph or digraph consists of a finite set v of d of elements called vertices and finite family of a of d are of ordered pair earlier in graph definition of graph we just used pairs of elements of d v of g here we are we find using specifying the term ordered pair of elements of v of d called arcs or directed edges this v is called the vertex set v of d is called the vertex set of the graph g d and a of d is called the edge set in other words directed graph can al- is also can also be defined as consisting of two ver- uh, sets of uh, on set of vertices v equal to v1 v2 etc and the edge set e1 e2 etc and a mapping phi which maps every edge onto some ordered pair of vertices vi and vj that is every edge is um every edge is uh, distinguished by this set of vertices vi and vj where uh, vi so vi comma vj means uh, this it starts from vi and ending to vj and usually the edge uh, vw is abbreviated to be vw it is not the same as wv when it comes to directed edge you know consider this figure here we have vertices u v w and z and consider these edges this from u to v we have an edge also from w to u we have an edge u to v we have two edges and w to v we have another edge from v to v it's a loop there is a loop and z to w there is an edge so the considering this what x set means u v w z and the edge set consists of this uv vv this loop and vw vw means here it is going twice two lines are going through this way so is, that is why it is written as vw twice w u this one wv and uh, is it w not w is it the ordering of vertices is usually sh- um, in a graph it is usually shown by the arrows and the edge that is if we are give, having these vertices a b 
C and if you are written like this, if you have to draw like this, draw the edge AC, AB and C, CD, then it is first AC is drawn used, used with this arrow. So first we are drawing a line connecting A and C, then arrow is used from this way and then AD, then CD. It, it how, this is how a directed graph is marked and denoted by it. The edges are denoted by these ordered pairs. If we are having a directed graph like this, and if the arrows are removed from the edges, then it is termed to be an underlying graph of the given graph. That is, that if, we are, if D is a digraph, and the graph obtained from D, by removal of the arrows, then it is uh, arrow, arrows in the edges. Then the given, then the graph obtained is termed to be the underlying graph of the given directed graph. So here we have the graph with uh, these arrows like this. U V is given like this arrow. Here we are removing all the arrows. That this, if it is D, then it is the underlying graph of this D. We have seen so many definitions regarding this graph. And all. So, all these definitions are also applicable to diagrams also. Usually, when these directed graphs are usually given, um, can be called as diagrams. First, we have seen, uh, we are going to see what is the incidence in a directed graph. In graphs, we know two, uh, an, an edge E is said to be incident with vertex V and W if it is, uh, if the endpoints of E are B and W. Here, also this um, two vertices are said to be adjacent if there exists an edge between them. And two edges are said to be adjacent if they have a common vertex for these edges. Now we will see what is the case, what it is going to be in the case of directed graphs or digraphs. Two vertices are said to be adjacent in a digraph if there exists an edge of the form. Two vertices say, V and W are said to be adjacent if there exists an edge of the form VW or WV. That is, if we are having W and V like this, if there exists an edge of this form from W to V or from V to W, then these vertices are either, either like this or like this, then these uh, vertices V and W are said to be adjacent. And the vertices V and W are said to be incident with this edge. So, adjacency and incidence. Here, we used to say that an edge is incident with a vertex. Now, we can hear in the case of dir directed graphs, we can say that incident out of a vertex and incident into a vertex. Because here, if V and W like this on edge E is there and if it is like this E is from V to W then E is said to be incident out of this vertex V and incident e is incident into this vertex W. That is what the vertex VI that if the vertex VI is taken, taken and if edge EK is taken and it is incident out of it then this vertex VI Vi is, if vertex Vi is taken and edge Ek is taken and if it is like that Vi, if it is Vj and it is Ek, here we say that this edge Ek is incident out of Vi and Ek is incident into Vj and this Vi is termed to be the initial vertex of EK, that is from where the vertex E, sorry, from where the edge EK is originating, then it is uh, said to be the initial edge or tail of that edge and this is said to be the terminal vertex or head of that edge, okay. In, here like this, VI and VJ are two vertices and EK is an edge and EK is from VI to VJ, then VI is termed to be 
the terminal uh, initial vertex or the tail of ek and bj is termed to be the terminal vertex or head of ek the edges for which the initial and terminal vertices are same forms a loop suppose if i have an edge e ei which starts from vi and ends at the vi itself that is like that then this ei is termed to be a loop that is the edge for which initial and terminal vertices coincide they are said to be called a self loop or they are they forms as it is said to be that edge forms a self loop the number of edges incident out of a vertex vi is termed to be the out degree in general uh, generally undirected graph we have used the number of edges incident on a vertex is termed to be the degree of that vertex but then here we are saying that number of edges which is incident out of that vertex is termed to be out degree of the vertex vi and it is written as d plus of vi and the number of edges incident into a vertex vi is termed that is we are getting into that here ek is getting into vj that is in degree of vj here is 1 Okay, it is uh, in into this V J is termed to be the in degree, and it is denoted by d minus of V I. Now consider this figure. Here we have vertices V one, V two, V three, V four, and V five, and the edges are numbered from E um, E one to E ten. Consider this vertex V one. If it was an undirected graph. Then what is what will be the degree of this V one? One, two, three, four. Four edges are incident on this V one. So the degree of usually we used to write as degree of V one equal to four. But here it is a directed graph, so we have to take how many edges are incident into V one and how many edges are incident out of this. And here how many edges are incident out of this V one? We can see this, this one, one. Two, three, three edges are incident out of this V one. So the out degree of V one, d plus of V one equal to three, and d minus of V one, that is one edge is only incident into V one. That is in degree is termed to be one. Okay, the in degree and out degree of a vertex. So what about this V two? Here we can see that. E four is getting into V four. We are V two. Also, this E five emerges out of this V two and emerges into V two. So, for here V five emerges out. So, out degree V this V five adds one to the out degree and one to the in degree. So, total in degree of this V two is two and out degree of V two is one. And what about this V three? Here we can see that how many edges are getting incident into V V three, one two three four. That is, in degree of V three is four, and out degree of uh, V three is one. And about y, V five, same. This V four, you can see that out degree is one, and out degree is one, and in degree is three. And what about this V five? Here, is there any edges getting into this V five? No. So only the edges one, two, three, four, four edges. The um, the total degree of V five is four. Uh, four. And when can come back to this directed graph, this total out degree is four and in degree is zero. Now we have some results regarding how about the condition of in degrees and out degree. Now here you can see what is the sum of these in degrees and some of these out degrees. This ah uh, three, four, five, ten. Here also ten. So in any graph, the sum of all in degrees is equal to the sum of all out degrees, and each sum being equal to the number of edges of the graph. I would like to take your attention that some some of all the degrees of some of the or uh, some of all the degrees of every vertices is equal to what is the number of edges? Here we have that 
sum of in degrees equal to sum of out degrees equal to number of fractures. And sum of all in degrees plus sum of out degrees is equal to then twice the number of fractures. Okay. And now we have already seen what is an isolated vertex in a graph. A vertex whose degree is zero, which is not connected to the rest of graph. Uh, such graph is termed to be, uh, so, sorry, such a vertex is termed to be an isolated vertex. So here also, then if the graph is underlying graph is a directed graph, what we say about the, uh, what we can say about what is an isolated vertex. An isolated vertex in a diagram is a vertex in which the in degree and the out degree are both equal to zero. That means no edges getting into that and no edges getting out of that. That means it is an independent vertex and that it is termed to be an isolated vertex. If V is a vertex in a diagram, it is called a pendant vertex. First, we just recollect the definition of a diagram in a normal graph. Vertex with the degree 1 is termed to be a diagram. Oh, uh, sorry. Pendant vertex in a normal, uh, undirected graph. A vertex V in a, v in a diagraph is termed to be a pendant vertex if its degree is 1. That is, if either it on edge will be incident into that vertex or on edge will be incident out of that. That is, we know that the, that is if uh, d plus of v, vi, so here we have to put like that. A vertex vi in a graph is said to be if a uh, digraph uh, is said to be a pendant vertex, if d plus of vi plus d minus of vi equal to one. Well, then what we uh, learned about the parallel edges in a graph, two edges are said to be parallel if they are incident with same pair of vertices. Here also the two edges are said to be parallel if they are ma mapped into the mapped into the same ordered pair of vertices. Here we have to take as vi vj if there are more than uh, one one edge between this vi vj that is same ordered pair of vertices it is not same as vj vi it is different if there exists an edge like this vi vj and we are having an edge in this direction and if there we are having an, another edge in this direction then we cannot term these edges to be uh, uh, parallel edges. Whereas in case of no undirected graph, if like that two edges are two vertices are here, if there is one edge from here to here and another edge from here to here, whatever it may be, reason, there are another of the directions, then these edges are said to be parallel. But if it is a directed graph, then two edges are said to be parallel if only if it is happening. Like this only. Instead of this, if it is going like this, then these edges are not are not parallel. That is what it is mean that in addition to being parallel in the sense of undirected edges, the parallel edges must also agree in the direction of the arrows. Okay. Now consider this figure. This is the figure that we consider earlier in the case of degrees of degrees of vertices. Here also the same thing. Here, this between V1 and V4, we have two edges. If it is an undirected graph, we can say that these are parallel edges. But see the direction of this E2 and E3. Are they in the same condition? No. Because E2 is E2 has its tail as V1 and head V4. Here E3, tail V4 and head V1. They are on the opposite directions. So they are not parallel. But this E8, E9 and E10, these are all parallel edges. Okay. Now this isomorphic graphs. Isomorphic graphs are defined as graphs that have identical uh, behavior in terms of graph theoretic properties. In other words, if the labels are removed, two isomorphic graphs are indistinguishable. That is the definition of that we know about this isomorphism of graphs. Now we will see how this isomorphism is defined in the case of directed graphs. Two directed two direct directed graphs or diagraphs are isomorphic if there is an isomorphism between the underlying graphs and preserves the ordering of vertices in each edge. Here look at this C. 
Here, if it is an, uh, con on considering the underlying graphs, this, it is both the same and they are isomorphic itself. And but this, are they isomorphic in the terms of directed graphs? You can see from B, yeah, considering this U, B, W and Z are the vertices. And considering this uh, in degrees, out degrees or whatever you may be the direction of the edges, you can kind of look from here B. You from here uh, to you here, one edge is going out and one edge is going into that. Here also the same thing. And ab about in B, on on uh, one edges, two edges are coming into B, and two edges are going out of E, and al also on do is there. Same happening here also. And what about W? In W, here uh, two edges are going out of W. And three edges, uh, two edges, uh, sorry, three edges are coming into W. And here, what is happening? Uh, how many edges are coming into W? One, two, two edges are coming into, and three edges are coming out, going out of this W. Here, three edges were coming into W. And also, this is a is a one an edge went out of W. Is it here? And one edge is coming into this. This two graphs are non isomorphic that is why here we have to here only this arrow has the change. Even though it is the condition, it, it is these two graphs are non-isomorphic. That is why the underlying graphs that preserves ordering of vertices in the each edge. In directed graphs, we have um, certain forms, uh, comes in many forms. But in, in fact, due to the assignment of direction of edges, directed graphs have more varieties than the directed uh, undirected ones. Let's see. We have defined simple graphs in an undirected graph to be a graph without any multiple edges nor loops. Here, digraph also is the same definition. It has no lo self loops nor parallel edges. But if we are considering it, in, it to be this undirected graph, we'll be, we can have this V1, V2, V3 and V4 vertices are like this. If it was an undirected graph, this is not a simple graph. But as it termed to be a directed graph, and we can see that V1 and V3, between V1 and V3, we have two edges. Though we have two edges, means parallel edges, but we see the definition of parallel edges in directed graphs. Directed graphs for edges to be parallel, they should be incident with the same pair of vertices and the ordering should be the same. Here the ordering is different. So they are not parallel edges. So this is also a simple digraph. Even though the underlying graph is not simple, the graph will be um, some in case of directed graphs, the graphs will be simple. On simple example, on taking the simple graph, a simple example, we can see that this graph, what will be the uh, uh, underlying graph of this? Underlying graph means graph obtained by removing the arrows of the edges. U, V, W, Z. This is the underlying graph. Is it a simple graph? No. It is not a simple graph. But whereas this directed graph is a simple graph. Why? Because this, even though there are, the, it seems that there are, these edges are parallel, they are not parallel because First edge is incident out of B and incident into W. Here, this edge is incident out of W and incident into B. Their arrows are on different direction, though these are not parallel edges. That is, the underlying graph of simple life gra digraph need not be a simple graph. This is a simple, first one is a simple digraph. Then we will see that what is asymmetric graphs. Graphs that have at most one directed edge between pair of vertices but not allowed to have self loops are called asymmetric or anti symmetric digraphs. That means there exists between one edge between every pair of vertices and does not have any self loops are called this asymmetric uh, simple graph. Asym asymmetric graphs are digraphs which have in which every edge for every edge. V, W, there are exists another edge, W, B. Then it is termed to be a 
symmetric digraph. That is, if u, v, w, if there exists an edge v, w, then this w, u should also be there. Then it is said to be a, if it is like this, this should also be there. Then it is said to be a symmetric digraph. If it is if it is not there, that have at most one direct edge between every pair of vertices, then it is said to be a asymmetric graph. This is not an. This is an asymmetric graph. Okay. Then complete graph, complete digraph. What we have learned about a complete graph. A graph is said to be a complete, complete graph if there exists an edge between every pair of vertices. Now we will see what will happen in the case of a digraph. Every vertex is joined to another vertex exactly by one edge. There are two types of complete graphs, which is one, one complete symmetric digraphs and complete asymmetric digraphs. We will see. Complete symmetric digraph is like this. That is, symmetric digraph means if there exists an edge of the form uv, then the w uh, uv, then v, uh, vu should be there. That is so to be a symmetric digraph. Complete means between every pair of vertices there should be an edge, and this is uh, complete symmetric between every pair of vertices there are two edges. And they are so in such a way that they are symmetric. This is said to be a complete symmetric diagraph. Complete symmetric diagraph is a simple diagraph in which there is exactly one edge from every vertex to another vertex. Complete asymmetric diagraph means it is an asymmetric diagraph there which exactly uh, in which exactly one edge between every pair of vertices. Every pair of vertices there is a uh, uh, maximum one edge. And between every pair of every pair of vertices are connected by an edge, and uh, it is not symmetric. This is complete asymmetric digraph. A complete asymmetric digraph is of order n. That is, if a uh, digraph has n number of vertices, a complete asymmetric digraph of order n has at most n into n minus one by two edges, whereas a complete symmetric digraph of order n has n into n minus one. Edges. Then this complete asymmetric digraph is also called a tournament or complete tournament. That is a tournament, then we can define a def tournament. Tournament of tournament is a digraph in which two vertices are joined exactly by one edge. We can see what is the application of tournament. To record the results of any game in which no draws are allowed, just like a, a tennis tournament or cricket match, etc. Now consider this figure. We have the vertices v, w, x, y, z. Here the direction from vertex x to y. Here the edge is from uh, x to y. Uh, this denotes the indicate uh, indicates the victory of y from in degrees and also here it is should be like that. Uh, here the direction of arrow from x to y indicates the victory of y over x. Here the y is the winner. From the in degrees and out degrees of such graphs, we can find the winner easily. Now we will see what is an oriented graph. A diagraph is also or, uh, referred to as oriented graph by some of the graph theorists. But some graph theorists use the terminology oriented graph to specify diagraphs which have at most one edge between every pair of vertices. That is, oriented graph is a diagraph that is ha not having any symmetric pair of directed lines. That means the uh, oriented graph does not have any two cycles. You will see the definition. Here, between two pair of vertices, we are having symmetric lines. From here to here and here to here. That means symmetric lines are there. So it is not an oriented graph. Here we have these graphs which is oriented, directed. Every, that means every edge is directed. 
and we are not having any um, symmetric lines between any pair of vertices. So it is oriented graph. Then what is uh, when a graph is said to be orientable? If each edge of a graph G can be assigned direction so that the resulting graph is strongly connected. For example, consider this graph. Here we can assign the directions to this um, edges so that the resulting graph is strongly connected. What is strongly connected? If, if, the, if any pair of vertices can be reached from other vertices, then they are said to be strongly connected. If you are starting from here, this vertex, I can reach this vertex through this way. Or even this edge can be reached, sorry, this vertex can be reached from here to, through this way. That is the strongly connected graph. The remark, every Eulerian graph is, Eulerian graph is orientable. Since if you are, uh, Euler, Eulerian graph means the graphs in which we travel through every, uh, every edges of a graph exactly once and reach the starting point. Since if we follow any Eulerian trail, directing edge in the direction of the trail as we go, we can get an, uh, this orientable graph. Now one important result connecting orientable graph. You let G a connected graph, then G is orientable if and only if each edge of G is contained in at least one cycle. Okay. Now we have, we have already said that the, all the definitions that we have used for undirected graph can be extended to directed graph. Now we will see, we have seen what is a walk in a graph. Walk in a graph it can be defined, was defined as an alternating sequence of vertices and edges starting with an vertex and ending with a vertex. Here also it is an alternating sequence of vertices and edges. V0, X1, V1, X2, V2 that is. This V0, V, uh, VI denotes the vertices and XI denotes the edges. And starting with the vertex and ending with the vertex. And in between there are edges. In which this XI equal to VI minus 1, VI. That is, Xi has its initial vertex as Vi minus 1 and Xi's terminal vertex or head is Vi. The length of such a walk is n, then then uh, the um, such behavior, how many edges are there? X1, X2, etc., Xn. So the, the length of such walk is n, and the num which is the number of edges in that um, walk. Similarly, uh, so in the same way, what is trail? It is an alternating, uh, it is a walk in which no um, edges repeat. It is uh, the every edges in the walk, should, if the walk, uh, if, if every edges in the walk is distinct, then it is shown to be a trail and if the, if no uh, vertices repeat, then it is said to be a path and a closed path is termed to be cycle. So in the say, same di definitions of Undirected graph is ap applied here, but only really we have to think that there we have used xi to be vi minus 1 vi. That means there, uh, there were no restriction how this xi will be called. Also, in that in undirected graphs, we have used this edge. If we are using an edge uv, sorry, here I have noted like vw here. Are, same using the VW, then in, in a trail, this edge cannot be used again. VW edge cannot be used again. But in case of directed graph, we can use the, this also VW can be used. And if there exists an edge, WV, that also can be used in a case of trail. Now consider this example. Here we can have a trail from EZ to W, Z to W, W to V, this one, V to W, this one, W to U. This is a trail. Okay. Then spanning walk. In subsets of graphs and all, we have learned this spanning. What is that? Spanning subgraph and all. Is the vertex A, is the subset A? Uh, Subset of uh, same subgraph contains all the vertices of a given graph, then it is termed to be spanning subgraph. 
Here, what is said to be a spanning walk, a walk that containing all the vertices of given graph is termed to be spanning walk. And similarly, if in a directed graph from u to b, if there exists a directed path from u to b, then u u is said to sorry, b is said to be reachable from u, or we can start a walk from uh, u to b, or u is said to be reachable from B. If there exists a path from U to B, then U is said to be reachable from U. Sorry, B is said to be reachable from U and the distance between U and B is denoted by D of UB. Is a length of shortest path. A semi-walk, the same way the walk as the definition of walk itself, an alternating sequence of vertices and edges and uh, where the edge is either V V minus one V i or V i V minus one. It can be any way. If there exists an edge in the form, we need not care about the direction of the arrow in that edge. If it is uh, there exists an edge x i either from V i minus one V i or V i to V i minus one, then it is said to be a semi uh, semi walk. The semi Semi path, semi cycle, everything can be defined. In undirected graphs, we used to have only walk, path, cycle, and all. In the case of directed graphs, we have the same definitions and also this semi semi path, semi cycle, and all. If that means it's a if there exists and if we can find an edge xi of the form vi minus one vi or vi vi minus one. A digraph is said to be balanced if for every vertex vi the integral equals to out degree. That is, if um, integral of a vertex equal to out degree of a vertex, then it is said to be a balanced digraph. A balanced digraph is said to be regular if every vertex have same integral or same out degree as every other vertex. If there are four vertices, a b. C, D. If A has out degree one, A should have in degree one. Then it is said to be balanced. That uh, like a vertex, this uh, vertex uh, also. If C is here, here a. Uh, then only this D becomes balanced. Here we are having B from their in degree out degree. Here the two out degrees are going. So some other. Then only this vertex can be. This diagraph is said to be balanced. If here. Every vertex is a um, uh, this diagraph is not regular. If every vertex has same in degree and same out degree as every other vertex, then it is termed to be a, bad, a regular graph. That is a balanced balanced diagraph is said to be a regular. And now we see what is the connectedness of a diagraph. A diagraph is said to be connected if the underlying graph of the uh, underlying graph of D should be connected. And this diagraph is strongly connected if two points are mutually reachable. That is, if for two vertices U and W, if there is a path from uh, v, to, uh, v to W, there should be a path from... Uh, if there are two vertices V and W, if there exists a path from V to W, there ex should exist a path from W to B also. If we can find a path like this, sorry, this like V W B W, we should find a path from W to B also. If then it is said to be a strongly connected graph. If such a path exists, 
then it is said to be strongly connected. Every strongly connected diagrams are connected, whereas every connected diagrams need not be strongly connected. Here it is not strongly connected. Why? Because we can find a path, uh, path from Z to B. Like this, Z to B, we can find a path. Is it possible to find a path from any of these vertex? Is it to any other vertex? But is it possible to find any other path from this U to Z or V to Z? It is not possible. So this graph is not strongly connected. Okay. But this is connected graph. Also, the strongly connected graphs are connected graph, but this shows that every connected graph may not be strongly connected. We can find what is the distinction between strongly connected graphs and there are connected graphs in a uh, diagraph. Consider, uh, can be made, we, we can take in the, the example of road maps in a city, all whose streets are on way. If the road maps is connected, then we can drive from one part of the city to another part, ignoring the direction of onward streets as we go. If the map is strongly connected, then we can drive from one part of the city to the other part of the city, always following the right way. That, are, that is that we are not crossing any onway, uh, onways in a wrong way. So, the, what is the di di distinction between Connected graph and strongly connected graph. I hope you, yeah, it is clear to you. A diagraph is said to be unilaterally connected or unilateral if two vertices, if between two vertices at least one is reachable from the other. If strongly connected, if one is reachable from the other, then the reverse way should be there. If there is, then only we can say that it is strongly connected. Unilaterally connected, if two vertices, at least one should be reachable from one another. A diagraph is said to be weakly connected or weak if two vertices are joined by a semi-path. That means if there are two vertices U and V are there, we can find either a path way from uh, V to uh, uh, U and V, then U to V or U to U to V or uh, V to U. Okay. That means converse of the above statements are not true. That is, if it is a strongly connected diagraph is unilaterally connected and unilaterally connected diagraph is weakly connected. If it is weakly connected, it, uh, it doesn't mean that it is unilaterally connected. And if it is unilaterally connected, it doesn't mean that it is strongly connected. But whereas a strongly connected graph is unilaterally connected and it is weakly connected. connected. Okay. The converse of the state that means the converse of the statement is not true and the diagraph is disconnected if it, even it is not even weak. Normal sense of under, uh, disconnected normal graph. Now we will see this application of uh, di uh, directed graphs. The first one critical path problem. Critical path problem relates to the scheduling of a series of operations. Suppose a task consisting of constructing a building has to be carried out. This task can be divided into number of activities such as while constructing a building, they have to do so much activities like laying foundation, putting the roof, doing wiring, plastering, etc. Some of these activities can be performed simultaneously. But most activities need to be completed before because we cannot put roof before doing this uh, basement activities. Whereas some need to be completed before uh, before others have, can be started. The problem is to find an efficient method to determine the activities, uh, should, uh, how that activity should be performed at which time schedule so that the entire job is completed in minimum time period. So that uh, if for completion of a building, we cannot uh, delay the com uh, completion of any work later than that period. So how we can use that thing? Construct a weighted graph. F first, we have to do that. We have to uh, suppose we are so many. We have so many activities, and we can lay them together. Uh, as activities can be marked as as best vertices, and then minimum time that which can be the or the time which has to 
which we record to compute the activities can be put as weight of the edge. What is weighted graph? We have already discussed that if the edges are assigned a non-negative non -negative values, then that is non-negative positive values, then it is termed to be a weighted graph. Represents the time span. This uh, weighted graph, these edges are assigned reads which relates to the time span of the graph, which is uh, required to come uh, time span which is required to complete the activity. Such a weighted graph on activities uh, on activity graph is shown here. We have activities from A to L, and the time taken to complete each activities, because this uh, activity uh, D and G. Uh, can uh, records three uh, three uh, let it be three uh, three months. This uh, uh, e two h records two months or two weeks. Two months is too large. Two weeks. So it so these activities has to be completed in how many weeks? How many weeks or how many days we have to complete these activities? Okay. So let A because all these director graphs, see what is the in degree of A? Zero and out degree of L? Zero. Suppose that we have the activities from A to L is marked like this. And since the entire project cannot be completed until all the activities from A to L has been completed. So we have to complete all these activities. These are so we have to find the longest path from A to L. This is accomplished by the technique of program evaluation review technique or PERT. We will see how it is working. First assign number, number L 0 to A. That is L of A to be 0. Level of A to be 0. That means L of A equal to 0. Then how this L of B can be calculated? Assign the number B equal to how many uh, in degrees are coming to B. Only from um, this edge from A is coming to B. So the, we can take to complete B minimum three days we require. And what about B? Then C. Here also a minimum L of A plus two. That is minimum two days has to be completed. And what to D? D here also L of B plus two. This L of B plus two is five here. And E. When coming to case of E, we have A, the edges are coming from B, coming from A, C. So, what, what will be at the maximum, at what maximum time the activity E can be completed? It is to be maximum of L of A, L of B, and L of C, which is equal to 9. So, here we are getting 9 and F, F is from, F, is, F comes from C only. So it is L of C plus F. So C plus 9, which is equal to 11. And as in the vertex G, this L of D, maximum of L of D plus 3 or maximum of L of E plus 1, which we can we found it to be 10. And about the vertex H, here we, uh, we have maximum of because H also coming from two after two uh, after the completion of two tasks. E and F only we can come start this uh, activity H. So H means uh, maximum of L of E plus 2 or uh, L of F plus 2 which is L of F plus 1 which is equal to 12. And to I, this I has to be committed after the activity. So I has to be started after, uh, committing the, after completing the activity F. So it is L of F plus 2 which is equal to 30. I J J here. This is taken in the alphabetical order only. That um, activities have been marked, and each activity is taken on the basis of alphabetical order on the basis of the incoming arrows. And so this J equal to maximum of L of G plus five, or or L of F plus uh, oh, sorry L of H plus five, which is equal to seventy. And to K vertex K, we are K K is completed after the completion of I, H, have to be completed after the completion of H and activity I. So it is 18 and to L has to be completed after completion of J, H and, uh, sorry, J, H and K. 
because L cannot be completed before completion of this construction cannot be completed before the construction of this uh, completion of this activity. So it is maximum of twenty two. So longest path takes twenty two days. If it is taken under condition of days, it is twenty two days. The job cannot be completed until twenty two days. So the longest path is called the critical path. And delay of any activity in the critical path delays the delay of the all job. It is also possible to find the latest time by which each operation must be completed, so as no delay is happening or the work is not delayed at all. So, looking back from L, we have to go through that. Means k equal to uh, L, we have to be completed in twenty-two days. So the k activity k has to be completed within twenty-two minus three, which is equal to nineteen, and j by that, and h here h has to be completed before this l, k, and all. So we have to take this h has to be minimum of this activity j. Okay, minimum of um, uh, seventeen minus five, twenty-two minus nine, nineteen minus five, and equal to twelve. The minimum of this quantity is twelve, and so, so each each how each activity has to be completed, we get, and thus we get a graph showing the completion of each activity. The time given, the it is if the this is the L is the maximum time that we can take to complete the activity, and each activity prior to this L has to be completed before that, and the maximum number of days that can be taken to complete the days, complete that those activities starting from the beginning, can is marked according to this. Uh, numbers in the circles. Okay, so far we have discussed what is a directed graph. That is, if uh, we are assigning direction to each every edges of a graph, then it is termed to be a directed graph. And this underlying graph of a graph directed graph. What is an underlying graph? If we are removing the edge, uh, arrows of a directed, uh, that is, if we are not considering the direction of the Arrows of the given graph, then it is termed to be the underlying graph. The incidence in an undirected graph, how these edges are uh, on edges incident with particular edges. Uh, sorry, on edges incident with particular vertices. And what is the condition? Incident into and incident out of a vertex, and incidence uh, in uh, in degree and out degree of a vertex. That is, if a vertex is the incident into that vertex. Then that vertex is termed to be the head of the that edge. So if an edge is incident into a vertex, then a, that vertex is termed to be the edge uh, head head of that edge, and the uh, vertex from which the edge is emerging out. That is called the tail of that vertex. Sorry, tail of that edge. And isomorphic diagrams we have discussed what is an tournament, an oriented and orientable graph. Then we have seen what is Walk path etc. in a directed graph, and connectedness of a directed graph and critical path graph. Thank you for watching this. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.